Before we dive into this week's episode, here's a promo. Why, hello, friends and enemies. Hello, friends and enemies. Friends, enemies. Hello, friends and enemies. Gather round. In theory, this is an Unsolved Mysteries podcast. Perhaps it's you. That's the name of the show. I'm Samantha. I'm Liz. We're one of many Unsolved Mysteries rewatch podcasts watching the original Robert Stack episodes of Unsolved Mysteries. We're here to complain about the thing we're supposed to like, Unsolved Mysteries. Unsolved Mysteries. That was a great shot. You're doing the Lord's work. (laughs) I will say right off the bat that this is going to be a good mustache season. (laughs) I like to think that Robert Stack wore a full suit just to like take out the garbage. (laughs) Just all the time. Yeah. Are you ready to solve some mysteries with us? The Stack is back. That's... Man, that's really terrible. I love, I yeah, it is. But I love saying it. <laughs> We're here to talk to you about some fucking mysteries. <laughs> we sure are. We're on like all those podcast things, or you can listen it out perhaps it's you.com. We hope this brought a little mystery into your life. Keep cackling and keep barking, everybody. Hi, I'm Laura. And I'm Joe. And this is Crime Divers. So, Jill, where in the world are we today? We're in the UK. Cool. And what's the episode called? It's not very original, I know. It's called The Black Widow. I know there's a lot of Black Widows. <laughs> I was just going to say there's quite a lot of Black Widow stories. So, this, this is just one of them. Just a, an appropriate title for the case, I guess. <laughs> well, yeah. So, do you want to dive in? Let's dive in. So, Dina Holmes was born in 1960 in Hendon, North London, UK, to Michael, a prison officer, and his wife, Margaret. Dina had a pretty uneventful childhood. Uh, she left school with 10 O-levels and her career started with a job as a teller at the local branch of the Halifax Building Society. In 1982, when she was 22, she met a guy called Lee Wyatt. Um, the following year, they moved to a place called Green Oaks in Lansing, West Sussex, and they got married in 1984. And in 1987, they had a son called Darren. So the village they lived in, it was just one of, it was small. It was one of these places where nearly everybody knows everybody else. You know, mm-hmm. they said hello to each other and pass on the street. Yeah. It was described as a very friendly, happy place to live. So Dina got a job in the Woolwich Building Society in nearby Arundel. Arundel, sorry. Um, just, just thinking it was frozen there. That's Ar- a, is that called that? Ar- Arundel. Ar- see, when I was writing that, I thought, I'm sure that's the name of the place in... In Frozen, yeah. not that I've seen Frozen very. I think I've seen it once. Yeah, Arendelle. Yeah. Well, it's Arendelle, I think it is. Arendelle. So, Arendelle. Um, so yeah, so Dina got a job in the Willowbridge Building Society, and the couple also set up their own company called Dina Lee Crafts. So Dina would make cuddly toys, and Lee would sell them to local like toy shops and gift shops and things. Right. And they had this one toy that they really wanted to be used. That their goal was to get this toy to be used in like cartoons and films, you know, hmm. TV. Right. And it was called Sean the Leprechaun. Right. <laughs> okay. I, I've no, never, I, never heard of it. Never seen it. Well, I looked it up, and it's not a very pretty leprechaun. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, like, yeah, as I said, they had big dreams of making like loads of money with this toy. Mm-hmm. So Lee was away a lot. I think. Um, I think he was travelling, as I say, like, because he was the one who was selling the toys right. to gift shops and yeah. stuff. So he was so, obviously doing a bit of travel. So uh-huh. he was away a lot. Um, and, like, when he was home, he would, like, say hello to the neighbours when he saw them and he was friendly. But he was, like, but the neighbours said he was never around long enough for them for them to really know anything much about him. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, the Dina Lee company failed and Lee's dad uh, helped him get a job in the Bedford Hotel in Brighton. Dina, realising that her dreams of being a millionaire were not going to happen, she started stealing money from the Bone Society where she worked. Oh dear. Um, but we'll sort of get back to that. Mm-hmm. So, stick a pin in it. Stick a pin in it. Uh, so, one day Dina met a, this man called Julian Webb. He was an advertising rep for the West Sussex Gazette. And he wanted to do like a makeover with someone using products and clothes from local shops just to a way to advertise local businesses. Mm-hmm. So he thought that Dina would be a perfect model for this and she was more than happy to do it. 
So she was in the local newspaper, like modelling clothes, advertising products, and they actually started having an affair. Oh dear. Mm -hmm. So her husband Lee obviously had no idea what was going on, mm -hmm. and he, but he and he and Dina got a mortgage and moved into a new house together in a place called Yapton. So. D uh, Julian and Dina had started their affair in May 1991 mm -hmm. and by August, May, June, July, August, that's three months, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I had to count all my fingers there, <laughs> they went round to Julian's mum's house to tell her that they were getting married. Okay. So this is the first time that Julian's mum had even met Dina, so obviously she was like, um, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Like, who is this woman? Like, yeah. You know, you, you've only known her for like three months. What's, what's going on? Yeah, like, I was about soon to be getting married, maybe. And then a couple of weeks later, Dina's neighbours noticed wedding cards on the windowsill of her house. There must be nosy neighbours to, be, to mm. be looking right in and must be, be yeah. able to see what the cards were. But anyway, um, so obviously her neighbours were confused as to why there were wedding cards in Dina's window when she was already married. Mm-hmm. They hadn't seen her husband for a while, but they just assumed he was away for work because, you know, as I said, he, he was away a lot. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> while he was away, she got married. Yeah. So she's anyway, committed the... Bigamy. 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 Anyway, meanwhile, 300 miles away in the Cornish seaside resort of Newquay, a man called Colin Mitchell was looking for a job. He was just walking along the street. One day, he was just, like, popping into all the businesses, you know, just to see if anyone was looking for staff. Mm -hmm. So, um, one of the amusement arcades took him on. And the manager said that Colin was easygoing, he got along with everyone, he would go out for drinks with other staff members, and he, he fitted in really well. And there was a flat above the arcade that was empty, so he, he moved in there and rented mm -hmm. while he was working at the arcade, he rented the flat above. Yeah. But, Colin had a secret. His name was actually Lee Wyatt, Dina's husband. Oh, okay. And he was on the run and in fear for his life. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. And why was that, may you ask? Yes, why, why, why was that? Because Dina lied to him because she wanted him out of the way. Because obviously she'd met the new guy she wanted to get married. Oh, so she's told him that... <laughs> Whoa, whoa, I'm going to explain this one, aren't you? Right, remember Sean the Leprechaun? Yes. Right. One day, Lee had came home from work. And obviously, this is when they were still together. Uh -huh. um, and she told him that she had been approached by the Irish airline, Aer Lingus. Uh -huh. And they wanted to give Sean the Leprechaun to their first class passengers. You know, just a free uh -huh. gift. <laughs> right. But that that wasn't it. That's, that's nothing. Oh, okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Disney. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that tiny little company called Disney. Uh -huh. <laughs> wanted to license Sean so they could make a movie about him. Oh, fuck off. So they were talking about, like, millions of pounds. They were they were going to be millionaires. Right. Okay. Right? Uh -huh. This is, their, this is their, their dreams. Yeah, yeah. Even though, if you remember, I just told you that the Dina Lee craft had actually um, um, failed. Ah, yeah, yeah. But anyway... Well, the, Sean the Leprechaun was going to save yeah, the day. obviously, Sean the Leprechaun, he was going to save the day. Uh -huh. So, of course, it took more than that to convince Lee. You know, he wanted proof. Mm -hmm. You know, because... Would you really? Well, you, you I want proof. Exactly. <laughs> but she was smart. She had letters from Disney and Aer Lingus oh. on fancy letterhead paper. Bloody hell. She obviously went <laughs> with the done. offers. <laughs> so they must have looked legit yeah. to Lee, you know. She, she showed up. They're yeah. on letterhead paper. She showed him it. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, and I mean, if he's asked for proof and, and she's given and she's it, given then, it, yeah. So he yeah. was like, okay, like, this is it. We're, we're making it big. Mm hmm. But unfortunately, the excitement didn't last for long. A few days later, Dina told Lee that the Mafia knew about the Disney deal yeah. and they wanted a share of the profits from Sean the Leprechaun. Uh -huh. And if they didn't get it, if they didn't get their share of the profits, they mm. were going to kill Lee and his family. Right. So Dina told Lee to, that to protect him, he was going to have to go on the run. So Lee changed his identity. He had read the book, The Day of the Jackal. I've mm -hmm. never read it, so I don't know. I've heard of it, but... Yeah, I've not um, And apparently in The Day of the Jackal, it details how to disappear. Okay. And, like, change your identity and everything like that. So that's how he learned how to change oh, his right, identity. Okay. Wow. Um, so he, off he went to, to, to uh, Nuki to keep his wife and son safe because he was like, well, they're after me. So if I go on the run, they're going to leave my, my wife and my son alone. Uh -huh. So he went to Nuki and 
changed his name to Colin Mitchell and he's working in an arcade. Right. Yeah. Whilst she's, she's got, married somebody else uh-huh. and he's paying his wages into her bank account. So he's obviously like um, using his money to pay his rent and, uh-huh. you know, obviously keep money for himself or yeah. for what he needed. But the majority of his money was going to her bank account, you know, to pay for their... Oh. Their mortgage, their yeah. child, you know. So what, what? she's 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 the one that's laughing here. At the minute, yeah. Right? So ba- and basically, he was funding her wedding day. <gasps> you, oh, you know, no. he like because that money that he's yeah, giving yeah, her yeah. that that she used that to pay for her wedding day. Awful. So she should just why could she just splat them? <laughs> so on the second of December, nope, sorry, second of November, mm-hmm. nineteen ninety one. That's uh, Dina and Julian got married. Right. But of course, like Julian didn't know anything. Like obviously, he's innocent and all ah, this yeah. as well. Right, okay. Like he didn't know anything about her being married. Right. Okay. Um. She. Had, well, she. She had told him that she was divorced. So. Right. Okay. You know, you can't blame him for anything. No, of course. Um. And then they went to Florida for their honeymoon, and then after that, they came back to Dina's house in Yapton and settled into married life. Wow. And I have to say, throughout this whole story, I have no idea about Darren, their son. Mm-hmm. Like. From what I researched, it didn't mention him, so I'm not sure if he's actually living with her or if. Well, yeah, because surely he would be like, "Well, why? What's going on? Like, where's my dad? Why? Who's this new guy that you're marrying? Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I'm not. It, he, like, well, he's not yeah. mentioned, so I don't know what the situation and with yeah, him is. He must be aware of. Well, you think aware of something because his yeah. dad's not there and she's moved. But in then his... you know. Um, like later on in the story, I'll, I'll tell you, like they go away and things like that. So it's like, well, we're for longer than just a holiday. So yeah. where's he stay? At? Like, yeah. where's the sun while she's away? So I just, I just want to, just in case you were wondering that I'm not right. mentioning him, I actually don't know. Right, okay. Fair so not long after they were married, Dina told Julian that she was terminally ill and the Willich Building Society were going to sack her because she was taking too much time off. Right. So she'd obviously been acting sick. Like, uh-huh. that just didn't just come out yeah. of the blue. Right, okay. Um, and, you know, she had been taking time off work and stuff to obviously... Make it look like... To make it look believable, yeah. Yeah. Because, um, you know, spoiler alert. She wants she, sex. She, she's not, no, it's not normal. <laughs> no. Um, so, because he, obviously he's like, what the hell? That's outrageous. Like, you're ill. Like, how can the... How can your work sack you? Like, that's ridiculous. Um, but to him, she was, she, she was obviously really ill and she needed treatment. So, like, how dare they threaten to sack her? Like, he mm. was absolutely livid. Yeah. Um, however, like as I said, like not only was the illness a lie, the reason she was getting the sack was because of the money that she'd I was been gonna stealing. Say, was it, had she been? Had she been found out? Yeah. So she was being investigated for stealing more than twenty six thousand pounds. Right. Okay. So she blamed it on her first husband Lee. Oh, that poor she... guy. He's I just know. what a shame. I know he's just got a bum deal here, like. Oh, totally. So she said that he had came back to Yapton, and he was threatening her, and he forced her to steal the money. So that's what she was telling him. Right. Mm. So Dina was also cheating, cheating on Julian. Oh, she sounds like a right delight. Jeez. <laughs> and one one of her neighbours actually said that she she must <laughs> no disrespect to her neighbours, but they must take an interest. I was gonna say they must be very nosy neighbours. <laughs> I was being polite there. I was saying, <laughs> I said they must have you know they must take an interest. <laughs> but like this because it was this it was a guy it was like one particular couple that was um. Yeah, you know, on this documentary that I watched on YouTube. But anyway, this guy would say, like, there was a few co- close calls. Like, Julian would come home for lunch every day. Mm-hmm. And sometimes he'd be just, like, driving into the street and, like, one of her men would be, dri- like, driving out, this, out the street. They would literally, Jesus. like, pass each other. Yeah. So, she, you know, she was playing with fire, like... Oh, she definitely was. So Dina then told Julian that Lee, her first husband... Her, her husband. Well, <laughs> I was yeah, gonna say her, her still her husband. Um, yeah, he was. She, so she told her other husband that he was uh, sending her hate mail, and she had even recorded a threatening phone call from him. So you're gonna wonder how? Why is there a threatening phone call? Or how is there a threatening phone yeah. call? Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, before Lee had left, uh-huh. when she was making up all this stuff, uh-huh. she told him to write some letters. And make that phone call, so I'll tell you what it is in a minute. But so that to the mafia, it would look like they had split up. So then they would leave Dina and their son alone because she'd be like, "Look, he sent me this threatening right, messages. Yeah. We're not 
so we're not together anymore. No. So so like I'm just wondering, obviously I don't know the answer, but like, what's Lee thinking? Is this is the 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 deal with this is still going ahead? Are they getting the money? Because well, he's just, believing all this. Yeah. yeah. No, but I mean like, cause like, cause, cause to me I'd be thinking, well, he's got a job down there and he's providing her money, and he'd be thinking, well. When's this deal gonna happen? You know when. Uh, why am I Why am I running on the run if it's not you know this deal's not happening? Mm. Well, I, he's maybe thinking that she's sorting it out. She's the one who's mm, dealing with it, okay. and these things take time. Maybe, maybe. Because then I'd I'd, I like, I'd like well, what see some of the money, you know? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um. So she so she had obviously planned this all way before he had left. She had mm-hmm. it all planned out. Right. And there's more in the letters, but I'll again I'll get to that later. Mm-hmm. So. One day, na- um, Dina's neighbour was sitting... The same guy. Jesus. <laughs> no, he was minding his own business this time. Are you sure? He was, yeah, he was sitting in his living room oh, with a friend of his when there was a knock at the door. Right. So he found Dina standing there clutching her blouse and was obviously upset and she said that she'd been attacked. Mm-hmm. So the neighbour decided to phone his wife at work to ask her advice on what to do. I think... Yeah, I know. I can see the look on your face. I think he just panicked and... Was like what? I don't know what to do with a woman that's on my doorstep. Yeah, that's, I, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, like you I know, our you. immediate thought is, well, bring her in the house, phone the police, you know, fight, you know. But I think he just must have panicked, and he was yeah. like, I thought my wife's got the wife. answer. Yeah, <laughs> she'll know what to do. <laughs> so his wife was like, well, the first thing you need to do is get a doctor, make like make sure she's all right. Mm-hmm. Um. So and she was like, right, I'll I'll come home. So the wife, um, so the wife went home, and you know, they'd phoned a the doctor and whatnot. But they found out that, like, Dina had said that she'd been raped, so they called the police. Mm-hmm. Dina had lied. I was going to say, she's yeah. not had, I mean, she hasn't, has she? Um, and said that Lee had raped her. Um, but, of course, the, the police took her allegation seriously, obviously. Course, I mean, yeah. we know that... Yeah, yeah of course, I mean, at, at the time... She's a lying bitch, but, you know... Yeah, at the time, of course, the police would be... Yeah, so they and... took her allegation seriously. She told the police that, that Lee had been stalking her... He had broken into her house, which is actually his own house, but never mind. <laughs> yeah. Um, and attacked her. She did have injuries. She had like a couple of burns that she said came from him burning her with a cigarette. And she also had vaginal bruising. Okay. She must have done that to herself. I was just going to say, yeah, she must have done that to herself. I don't know how. I don't want to know how. No, me neither. Thank you very much. So, Lee... Find out that the police were looking for him, and of course he still thought that the mafia was after him as well. So he shit himself, you know, was like panicking. Mm-hmm. But he t- he turned up at the house one night to kind of say, Dina, like what what the hell's going on? Julian was asleep upstairs. I was just gonna say, yeah, I mean, where was he? <laughs> so Lee confronted Dina about the story she'd been making up about him, but she like kind of hustled him out the door, you know, because she's obviously panicking <laughs> in case her husband gets Jesus. out of bed and. Yeah. She's another husband. Yeah, so I don't know how she managed it, but like she managed to get him to leave. Mm-hmm. Um so anyway, the police the police did arrest Lee later, but I think I think it was after the end of this case, you know, right. like after uh-huh. she gets her confidence. She, yeah. Um and he and he had a so th- he had a cast iron alibi. He had been working at the arcade three hundred miles away uh-huh. when Dana claimed that he had attacked her. Right. Um, so, as I said before, her, her injuries were self-inflicted. So, I'm assuming the police must have known that he had a different name by this point as well, because if they did investigations to find out where he was, the, empl- the employer would be like, well, no, I employ a... Yeah, they find out later, like, that... as I say, like, sorry, at the end of everything, yeah. like, oh, obviously everyone all came out, that... so... On the 30th of June, 1994, it was Julian's 31st birthday. His mum, Rosemary, got home from work and, you know, phoned my son to say happy birthday. Mm-hmm. Um, but Dina answered the phone and told Rosemary that Julian was ill and that he had been ill since Tuesday. It was now Thursday, so he'd been ill for a couple of days. Mm-hmm. And Rosemary was like, oh, what's wrong with him? And Dina said, oh, he's, he's had too much sun. <clears throat> and Ro- Rosemary was like, that's weird because... Julian, he didn't like being out in the sun for... He didn't like sunbathing. He mm-hmm. didn't like being out in the sun for too long. Yeah. And Dina had said he was being sick, which was probably a mixture of the sun and the alcohol he'd been drinking. But again, Rosemary said, he didn't drink very much, though. He didn't like the sun. He didn't drink very much. That doesn't sound like something he would do. No, it, that doesn't sound like him at all. Yeah. Uh, so she didn't, she didn't even get to wish him a, a happy birthday. So sometime that night, the next-door neighbour 
His doorbell rang. Oh, for God's sake, this bloody neighbour. <laughs> They were, they, were, they were asleep, so I'm sure they must have got a fright with somebody at the door, you know, in the middle of the night. Anyway, it was Dina, and she said, it's Julian, I can't wake him, he stopped breathing. And she said she'd called an ambulance and she'd tried to revive him, but he wouldn't wake up. So the paramedics arrived and rushed upstairs. The neighbour asked Dina what had happened, um, because she was like, oh, I just, just saw Julian a couple of days ago. He said he'd had the flu, but, you know, he seemed okay. And Dina just said, oh, he's, he's taking some pills. So the paramedics took Ju Julian out to the ambulance and they said to Dina, maybe it would be better if she sat in the front mm -hmm. of the ambulance rather than the back with, with Julian. Mm -hmm. And her neighbour said that she seemed like an excited child who's been given a bag of sweets because she was getting to sit in the front of the ambulance. Okay. Weird. Yes, very. But unfortunately, Julian died from an overdose of antidepressants and aspirin. Oh. So the following morning, Julian's work colleague, Jeannie Knight, she got she got to work at 7.30 in the morning. Um, and as she, as she was walking down the street, she noticed like two people were sitting on the doorstep of the office. Mm -hmm. And as, at first she thought they were like, just, you know, maybe homeless or something mm -hmm. like that, you know, like just having yeah. a seat. Uh -huh. um, but as she got closer, she realised it was a man and a woman. And the woman who was wearing a nightie under her coat was Dina. Right. So Dina was crying and, you know... Oh, her husband's just died. Yeah, as soon as she saw Ginny, she was like, Julian's dead. Mm -hmm. You know, and like, so obviously. But in the next breath, quite clearly, without any sobbing, she said, I want to see the advertiser manager about Julian's life insurance. So uh, the sobbing and the, you know, uh -huh. hysterics kind of just stopped. It was like, right, mm -hmm. I want to see the manager. Right. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. So Julian had died of a, mass of a massive overdose and Dina had said it was suicide. Mm -hmm. But as Julian had been in good health and high spirits before he died, the police began to investigate. So it was reported that the coroner found no evidence that Julian had accidentally taken a lethal overdose, but there was insufficient evidence to say whether it was suicide or not. Right. So at the inquest, Sussex police stated that there was no proof that his death was suspicious. The coroner uh, recorded an open verdict and the police closed their investigation. Uh -huh. So Julian's mum... Uh, Rosemary, who had obviously been asking Dina questions, like, whose antidep antidepressants were they? Like, where did where did they get them from? Mm -hmm. And Dina, Dina said they were hers and they were in the kitchen drawer. Um, but Dina obviously didn't like the questions and she told Rosemary that if she didn't get on with the funeral plans, then she was going to get Julian cremated because his mum wanted to bury him. Oh, right. um, and she was like, if you don't, if you don't get a move on, I'm just going to get him cremated. And she was just, like, being really unpleasant and nasty, like, if your husband's just died, yeah, and you know you're not going to be unpleasant to his mother, are you? Well, no, like exactly. she's just lost her son, so exactly. um, you know that's just not the way you'd expect a grieving wife to treat her grieving no, mother-in-law. Exactly. I mean, you could maybe understand it being a bit like, what's the word? Um, like you know, she's not got the patience, or she might snap at things maybe a little bit, but not just being pure. No, she was just being unpleasant. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and there was obviously a reason why she wanted. To get him cremated, Please. you know, she wanted the funeral as soon as possible. Yeah. So Dina left the house for the funeral in a black leather miniskirt. Now I'm going to tell you, this is the neighbour that described her. Oh, for God's sake! <laughs> was this not communicated just a bit by the neighbour? <laughs> <laughs> Dina left the house for the funeral in a black leather miniskirt, mm -hmm. a black blouse which barely covered her boobs, and she was waving to the neighbours as she left. Like they just said, it seemed really inappropriate. So Julian wasn't cremated. His mum had his mum did have him buried. Mm -hmm. Um, and the funeral was like held in a wee old church, and it was packed with mourners. But while the right hand side of the church was full of Julian's family, friends, and work colleagues, the left hand side only had one person sitting there, and that was Dina. Oh, which is weird, doesn't it? I mean, like mm -hmm. you'd think that even if people didn't know her husband they knew her so they would be there for her for her yeah exactly so then them know she was married to this child. well i don't know I, I don't know the situation there so maybe maybe none of them knew maybe they all just assumed that she was still with lee and he was and, just away yeah maybe yeah. yeah maybe and one of julian's friends said that he will never forget the sight of her face it was just expressionless yeah also, one of his colleagues said that there were beautiful flowers that had been sent, like, by family and everything, but he noticed that the flowers that from Dina mm -hmm. had been stolen from other graves around the cemetery and stuffed into, like, a paper bag. You know, like, 
you know th- those paper bags that you just brought down because Laura brought brought us a cake. Uh, yes, I did. <laughs> so we had a cake before we were um in between recording. But it was like a sort of like just that little paper bag uh-huh. that you can that if you'd maybe yeah. get if you're buying us a, a cake. I, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, that's what the flowers were shoved in that, from his oh, wife. Lovely. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was and there was a card uh-huh. from her, and it said to Julian because you loved me so. Okay. Not that she loved him, uh-huh. but that he loved her. Right. Yeah. Very strange. Yes, very. Really. So, now that Julian had gone, Lee was still on the run, mm-hmm. so D- Dina was alone. Oh my God, don't tell, do? don't tell me she moved on to somebody else. Well, a lot of men Cause, came and went. Because I was almost thinking this, that, that maybe it was a roundabout way of her allowing, paving the way for Lee to come back. And obviously <laughs> that's not the case. No, that's not the case. Right, okay. A lot of men came and went after Julian's death. Some lasted a day or two, some lasted a bit longer. A man called Robert Waite used to work with Dina at the Halifax Building Society in 1980. And one day he received a card from Dina inviting him to a reunion party. So he phoned her and she invited him round for dinner. So he accepted and he went round, but she didn't like really seem very happy to see him. Right. It sounds like a bit of a bizarre situation. But anyway, so there's a lady called Mandy Fuchs. Um, she had also worked with Robert and Dina. And they, um, Mandy and Dina used to actually compete for Robert's affection. You know, they also oh, right. both fancied him. Uh-huh. And, yeah. and like Dina always had it in her head that something had gone on between Robert and Mandy, which there hadn't. They were just friends, but Dina had it, always had it in her head that there was mm. something between them. Right. So anyway, after Robert had been round for dinner at Dina's, Dina phoned Mandy, then she'd seen her for however long, and told her that Robert had just been round for a meal and then one thing led to another and all of a sudden they were in bed together. And Mandy was like, Dina, I, I, I don't care. I don't care. I don't want to know this. Yeah, like, I'm not interested. That's, that's I have, weird. I haven't spoke to you for all this time and that's why you've wanted me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But um, Dina just obviously wanted her to know just to kind of gloat and thinking that she'd be jealous. Whereas right, okay. this other woman's probably like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, like, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care about somebody who I was friend with 20 mm. years ago or whatever. Well, exactly. Like, I've probably moved on <laughs> in my life a lot by now. So, yeah, so after all these years, she just wanted to let Mandy know that she had won. Oh, she right. had got Robert in at bed. Right, okay. So, Dina told Robert about Julian dying. And when he asked what had happened, she, uh, she must have mentioned that she was still married to Lee. Just, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, but when he asked what had happened, she told him that she was into, that, sorry, that Julian was into weight training and he took an overdo- overdose of steroids. Oh, so, so that's a different story to what she'd been saying before. Because it was antidepressants before, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, antidepressants and aspirin. Aspirin. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, she told him that her first husband had been abusive and the second husband had died. Right. So, Robert, you know, obviously, he, he felt sorry. felt sorry for her. You know, you've had an abusive husband. You've had a, mm. a you know, a, a husband who's died. But he wasn't interested in her romantically. Like, yeah, they'd had sex that first night. Mm-hmm. But, like, he didn't want a relationship no. with her. He, you know, he wasn't interested. Mm-hmm. Um, and, she, and she actually, she did actually phone Mandy to tell her that as well, though. <laughs> and she wasn't happy about it at all. Oh, like, she was like, no, he, he, he doesn't want to see me romantically now. Don't know why she thought this Mandy would be interesting. I always, obviously, she just thought that they had him in common. <laughs> but she, but because Robert felt sorry for her, they did, like, the... Um, what, they like, spent time together? Or? Yeah. So, one day she just dropped into the conversation with Robert that she had to go and have radiotherapy. Right. So I asked what was wrong, and she said, oh, you know, it's just a little problem I've got. Nothing for you to worry about. And, like, she knew, she was just so devious that she knew, like, by by doing that, like, oh, no, it's fine, you don't have to worry about it. She knew that, that because he was such a nice guy. It would keep up that, there. Yeah, exactly. Like, by telling him that she was dying, he wouldn't walk away from yeah. her. Um, which is exactly what happened. He didn't, he didn't walk away from her. So he was kind of stuck in a non-romantic relationship with her that he felt that he couldn't get out of. Mm-hmm. So Robert decided to take Dina to her favourite place, Florida, where he could, he would take care of her during her final months. This is what I meant about the sun. Mm-hmm. I don't know where the sun was when this because um, what he thinks is happening is she, um, Dina's dying. So 
he's going to take her to Florida, look after her while she dies yeah, yeah. in Florida. Uh-huh. So that's why I was like, I don't understand where her son was at, the, at this yeah. point. So mm. I don't know. I can't yeah. answer that. Um, so they drove to the airport in Robert's car and parked in the short stay car park. As Dina had said, her dad was going to come and pick it up, um, you know, later on or whatever. And yeah. off they went, went off to Florida. Right. So after a few days of being in Florida, Robert woke up and he felt this like sharp jab in his side. Him and Dina were sharing a bed and he said to her, I, felt, I think I like, I think I just felt something in my side. And Dina was like, oh, sorry, I think I just scratched you or like maybe something bit you. So I'm not... A bit weird. Yeah, I don't actually... Oh, well, well I do actually know. I just realised I do know. Because I was just <laughs> thinking, I can't remember what happened there, but I've just remembered. Uh, right, okay. Um, and he, no- he noticed that she was awake already, like, because at first he thought he'd sort of woken her up, but, mm-hmm. like, when he realised, like, she was totally wide awake. Mm-hmm. Um, but then but then he said, he's sure that he missed that next day. He thinks she drugged him. And that would be what the jab was. The needle. Oh, the needle, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, so he was he was out. He was unconscious. And when I interviewed Robert, said that he didn't want to think about what might have happened on that day when he was unconscious, so that the interviewer just didn't push him to talk about it. So right. I don't know if he thinks that. Well, I don't know. He didn't want to talk about it, yeah. so I'm not going to talk about it. He basically he was unconscious. And he didn't know what. Happened. And he didn't know what happened for a day. Uh-huh. He was out of it. So. Shortly after that, Dina told Robert that she had to go to New York. Okay. Now, this is a dying woman. <laughs> they, uh-huh. they came out so that she could spend her final months. Of it. Anyway, she told Robert that she had to go to New York to appear as a witness in an anti-mafia trial. And she would be back soon. She said, I don't know how long she said she was going to be away for her, but she was going to be for this trial and then she'd come back. Okay. But she actually flew back to the UK as she had to appear in court for defrauding the Woolwich Building Society. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So she just up and left Robert and left him stranded in Florida. He had nothing. For three weeks, he was there with no money, no food, until one day he was arrested, handcuffed, and fingerprinted and deported. So I'm assuming that the hotel must have phoned the police for him not checking out right. when he was supposed to. Oh, I was think he was supposed to have checked out. Yeah, I'm assuming so. Because, well, I don't know, because... Well, I don't know how long... I don't know... See, it's a bit... Sketchy. Yeah, a bit sketchy because obviously, like, he was supposed to, they were supposed to be spending her final months there, but then... So you think they would have somewhere more long-term? Yeah, exactly. So I'm not... I don't know her, but that's what happened. Anyway. That's how he got home, was right. because he got deported. Right, okay. Because he didn't have any money to get home. He right, was stranded in okay. Florida. So when he got back to England, he went down to Dina's house, obviously, to get some answers, but she wasn't there. Her next-door neighbour... Uh-huh. ...told Robert that Dina had been... <laughs> Knows everything. Oh, fucking nosy neighbour. <laughs> I have to say, none of my neighbours are like my neighbours. Don't, probably don't even know my name. No, I was just going to say. I mean, they, they wouldn't be that nosy that they know what's going on. <laughs> um, yeah. So the next door neighbour told Robert that Dina wasn't there because she had been sentenced that day to eighteen months in prison. Um. So that it was the thirty first of August, nineteen ninety five. Um. And she was convicted for stealing twenty six thousand pounds from the Woolwich Building Society in nineteen ninety one. She had created a fake account for an imaginary customer called Christina Duke and Dina was putting money into this Christina's account. But she said that this Christina stole the money with her husband. Dina, she's like, Christina and my husband, okay. Lee Wyatt. Because uh-huh. um, remember, like, when D- Dina told Julian that Lee had been sending her mail yeah. and making threatening phone calls... Uh-huh. But she had ba- she had basically told him what to say. It's like she had dictated. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is where the letters came into play. Right. Lee had written that he had stolen the money with Christina Duke, so he was incriminating himself. Oh, so pretend like the, so if the mafia came calling, then they'd be like, yeah, she's not got any money. He's stolen it all. Yeah. But actually, that was almost to get her off the hook for the... The Woolwich Bank <laughs> yeah. stealing. Jesus Christ. It's, it's a bit confusing, isn't it? It is a bit confusing. So, like, one policeman said, quote, he was literally incriminate him, incriminating himself in the letters, saying he was on the run with Christine, mm-hmm. a woman who never existed, uh-huh. and the police would never catch him as he's too clever for them. And there's a, num- and there's a number of such letters. Oh, there's no, oh, maybe there was a few letters because I'm quoting this guy. I must have quoted him. Right. I'm good at quoting. Here. Yeah, good. Uh, 
Uh, but you've got to ask the question, how on earth can a woman influence her husband to write such letters and change his lifestyle completely as he did, end quote. Yeah, I mean, that is a, a fair question because <laughs> you do think, like, how has that got to that? Like, how how is that? I mean, from what I gathered, I mean, he just thought he, he was protecting his wife and his son, he was protecting his family yeah. from everything that he did. Uh-huh. It was to protect his family. That yeah. I don't know. Anyway, Dina was released after nine months and she returned to her house in Yapton. And even the neighbour was like, she's got a bit of a front, you know, coming back, <laughs> coming yeah. back to her, like when we all know what she's yeah, done. we know what she's done. We know what she's done. <laughs> uh, one day, so one day she was in a shop and she met a man called Phil Trott. So it was an embroidery shop and he was looking for them to do a design on his business shirts. So Dina heard him talking to the shop assistant and she was like, I can do that for you. So... They chatted because remember she used to meet the teddies and stuff. Oh, so of she's, course, yeah, yeah. yeah. She was actually maybe telling the truth that she could do that. Yeah. yeah. So they chatted and arranged to meet in the pub later that night, and they started seeing each other. Oh, for God's sake! Could it not just be like business? <laughs> uh, Phil was <laughs> Phil was a landscape gardener, and Dina told him that her friend in Florida would give him a big contract to landscape her garden. So they took research trips around like gardens of English stately homes, and they would have sex in the outdoors. Excuse me. Um, like she loved to pose in front of the camera. She flash her bits and you okay. know. Mm-hmm. Uh, for weeks, their relationship was fun and carefree because you know they were having sex outside. She was flashing her bits and uh-huh. you know they were obviously living their best life. Yeah, here it is. Again, don't know where her son is. is. <laughs> um, but then one day they were in the bedroom and Dina started coughing into her hand. She looked down and went, "Oh no, not again!" And she had blood in her hand. So he asked what was wrong and she acted, you know, she was like, oh, no, no, it's fine. I don't, no, I don't want to worry you, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and it basically, same act, different guy, isn't it, really? Oh, yeah. Um, she eventually told him that she had cancer of the throat. Of course, there was no cancer. There was no friend in Florida. I don't know how she actually managed that, though. The blood, to compl- yeah. Unless she'd already had it in her hand. Uh, and, yeah, like a tissue. Or, or, maybe it was nail varnish or something. I was going to say, maybe it was tomato ketchup. Like... Maybe. You know, or maybe she'd kind of cut her hand earlier and just, I don't know. She's obviously figured out some way to trick him. Um, So after a couple of months of them seeing each other, Phil noticed that his credit cards were missing. And after looking for them for a while, um, he actually found them in Dina's handbag. And cash was missing from his wallet as well. So uh, he told one of his friends and that friend came round and they're like, nah. We're not, we're not, she's stealing, you know, she's a thief, we're not having this. Mm-hmm. So they changed the locks on on Phil's front door because she, she had a key for his house, so right, okay. changed the locks. So not long after, the phone rang, and it was Dina. Uh, she told Phil that she had been to the travel agents and had a bit of a problem, and that she'd be in his house, she would be at his house soon. So he said that he didn't want to upset her, so he changed the locks back. <laughs> okay. And then... His, his pal was still there. So Phil and his friends sat chatting for a while. And then they both thought, nah, something's not right with this woman. So they changed the locks back again. Sorry. <laughs> so then when she did turn up, she's going to get in. Right. <laughs> okay. So she was obviously not happy and asked why he changed the locks. And he would said to said to her that he knew that she was a fake. Like, and he would said to her, like, there was lots of things that she'd said and done and that just didn't add up. And he was yeah. just like, nah, we're, yeah. you know, uh, we're done. Yeah, this is not going any further. But, she, you know, she didn't dwell on it for long. <laughs> of course not. She'd probably prey on it and another victim. Because she was then putting adverts in the Lonely Hearts column in the newspaper. And she had plenty of men replying to her. So Richard Thompson was a divorced telecoms manager and he answered one of her ads. Within months, they were arranging to fly to Florida and get married at the Holiday Inn. Remember, she's still married to Lee. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> and where is he? <laughs> I think at some point he was living on the streets, I think. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Or could, at this point, he could still be working in the oh, arcade. Mm-hmm. Um, so Dina said she would, she would, she would said that she would arrange for people to be their witnesses. I think she was going to get, I don't know if it was friends or family, she was, she, but she was arranging the witnesses. Yeah. So they had everyone arranged and all they needed was their witnesses so they could get married. But when they got out to Florida, their witnesses never turned up. So at the last minute, Richard had to go around the hotel and find people to be their witnesses. And they ended up with the hotel manager and a, me- and a member of staff doing it for them. Did you not, you're not a witness for somebody. 
Yeah, yeah. I was, I um, remember that. My friend worked in a hotel, uh-huh. and there was a couple from England. Wanted to get married, just the two of them, but they obviously needed a witness. So my friend was like, "Can you come in and and we'll, we'll both be witnesses?" So I went in some random uh, wedding photos because they took photos with. Uh, I'm like, why do they want us in their photos? <laughs> <laughs> but they actually had us in their wedding photos oh, and everything. Really? So oh. I'll be in some random person. I'm, this couple, if they're still married, I've got me and my pal uh-huh. in their wedding photos. <laughs> and I wasn't even dressed up for it. I mean, you know how you dress up for a wedding, a nice dress. Yeah, or... yeah. I had basically what I would wear for work. Like, and so did my pal. We basically just had like a black skirt and mm-hmm. a, white, a white blouse on. Yeah. Like what you would wear to the office. Uh-huh, yeah, That's yeah. what we were dressed That's in. That's what you had on. <laughs> and I was hungover because it was a Saturday morning. I was always hungover on a Saturday morning. <laughs> I never got out of bed on a Saturday morning usually. Jesus. So, yeah. But yeah, I've done that. So yeah, I was going to say, it, <laughs> it happens. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, but I think it was just like, she had said that she was arranging for her friends or whatever. And I, just, I think it just goes to show that she hadn't told anybody about it. The same with what we thought with Julian, you know, when she was at his funeral with mm-hmm. nobody there. Yeah. I think it was probably the same with uh, Richard as well. I think she was like, yeah, yeah, I'll get my friends to come over and be witnesses. But then they didn't turn up. I mean, because she's not obviously told she's, them. She, yeah, because she's so, still maybe mad to leave. Well, she still is mad to leave. <laughs> Oh, you're not too confused. I hope none of the listeners are too confused. I mean, it's a lot. This woman is a lot. She has a lot. Are you ready? <laughs> Christ, how much more is it? Not much. So Dina promised Richard a new life in Florida. She's got another obsession with Florida, isn't she? So have you. Well, I don't have a lot. <laughs> you but love I, Florida. I don't, I don't go over there and leave random men and, and get <laughs> married and stuff like that. <laughs> I think Justin would be too happy if you just left. Well, maybe it would be if you just left oh, him there. Okay, okay. <laughs> Glad to get rid of you. Ah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, she'd promised him a new life in Florida. She told him that she had won £300,000 on the lottery. Which she hasn't. Yeah. <laughs> I'm quite surprised she only said £300,000. I thought it would be maybe well, one million, yeah. But maybe she thought that wasn't believable. Right, because of the mafia and, and Disney and all that. <laughs> Who knows? Um, so, yeah, she'd won £300,000 on the lottery and, she'd encur- and she encouraged him to finally realise his childhood dreams. He had always wanted a boat. That was his childhood dream. Always wanted a boat. All right. So Dina said, well, we've got money. Let's set you up in business as a big game fishing skipper. So Richard went to American Sea School. That's the thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that is a thing. I actually did go. All right. Okay. Um, which is actually run by the US Coast Guard. Oh, right. Okay. And he worked really hard to pass the exam and he, he passed it with flying uh-huh. colours. Uh-huh. So Richard then took early retirement and Dina spent his payoff renovate, renovating his cottage to rent it out while they were living in Florida. Mm-hmm. So, and just, just a wee side note, um, they had a waste disposal disposal on the sink for all their waste food and Dina asked Richard one day if it would get rid of bones. So when she replied, no. <laughs> just thought, I just thought I'd put that as a side yeah. note because that's just a, a, random, I'd be like, eh, red flag, red flag, red, why are you asking me if bones can go down there? Yeah, a bit of a random question. Mm-hmm. So that was just a wee side note. Anyway, so Richard had always wanted a German Shepherd and Dina bought him one. His name was Odin. I don't know why she was buying him a dog when they were going to move to Florida though. I don't know, you can take the dog with you, but like, mm. why did she not just wait till she got to Florida? Oh yeah, you think. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> One um, day she randomly said to Richard, do you mind if I pretend to attack you and see what Odin does? So she pretended to attack him by just punching him or whatever, and Odin went for her and bit her. Mm. There's a reason for it. I'll tell you in a minute. So one day, Dina told Richard that a solicitor would be arriving the next day with a green card, which is a permit allowed, allowing a foreigner to live and work permanently in the US, and then the following day, they could fly to Florida. So it was all planned out. This was it. We're, we're doing it. We're yeah, going. We're off. A couple of days, we're going. So that night, she ran him a bath. Then uh, once like once he was finishing his bath, he came through and she said that she had a surprise for him and he was to lie on the floor. She then tied his, uh, his hands behind his back and she put some tape around his ankles. He went along with it because he was thinking it was like a sex thing. Mm-hmm. You know, he always said like that, you know, tying yeah, yeah. up and stuff. So he... Yeah. Thought, thought yes <laughs> yes I'm, I'm getting it it's, I know I'm you know. getting something out right. and then she placed a towel across his face and the next thing he knew he had this absolute colossal pain in his head so she was hitting him over the head with an aluminium baseball bat holy shit and the blood was pouring out of his head like into his eyes and like she stabbed him with a carving knife in his shoulder oh. she then slipped in the blood and fell to the floor so Richard, like, sort of felt for her, because obviously he's 
got blood coming out of him, he's got a towel on him, but he felt for her, uh, grabbed her, grabbed her face and pushed his thumb into her eye. Ooh. So she went for the knife again and he said to her, I'm going to give you a choice here. If you don't let go of that knife, I'm going to push your eye right through your head. Ooh. So good on him for, uh -huh, yeah. you know, quick thank him. Uh -huh. So she dropped the knife because she obviously didn't want her eye uh -huh. to poked it. Yeah. And, he, and he, managed to, he managed to get up and he called the police. Right. Okay. So... The reason Dina had pretended to attack him before must have been because she was planning to murder Richard and she wanted to see what the dog would do. Yeah. So, before she properly attacked him. So, like, she, was, oh, she locked Odin away this time. I was just going to say... I don't know why she bothered asking him. I mean, like, to me, that would be a... I was on that anyway? Yeah, exactly. If I was going to attack somebody, the first thing I would do is lock the dog away because... Oh, yeah, exactly. Of course the dogs... Well, most dogs, I would think, are going to... Their yeah. instinct's going to kick in. They're going to protect their owner, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, I would think so. So, I don't know why she bothered asking it like yeah but but i wish i hadn't because he obviously odin protected them the first time he would have done it again mm -hmm. anyway uh so dina was arrested and tried for the attempted murder of richard she pleaded not guilty she claimed that richard became violent when she told him that florida was all a lie she said that she had hit him with a baseball bat in self-defense so the jury believed her and <laughs> <laughs> Looking at your eyebrows, just went bing. <laughs> her okay. eyebrows just went straight up. As if to say, really? <laughs> they actually didn't believe her. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, the jury believed her, and on the seventeenth of August two thousand, Dina was acquitted of attempted murder, but she ad admitted fifteen counts of deception against Richard and her former partners, and was jailed again. So she was sentenced to three years and nine months. So the day after. Dina tried to murder Richard an estate agent turned up at the house um, and told Richard that he had been told by Dina to sell the house um, and she told him that Richard was in Florida so basically she was expecting Richard to be dead now mm -hmm. so she had said to the estate agent oh yeah he's he's moved to Florida so you can just sell the house so yeah. she was just selling the house like kill him and selling his house basically um, so it turned it uh, turned out, you know, Dina planned to kill Richard, sell the house, and no one would be suspicious because they all thought he was abroad. Ugh. So that's how she thought she was going to get away with it. Uh -huh. Everybody would think that he was He's abroad in it? Florida. Uh -huh. So during the investigation into the alleged murder attempt on Richard, the police took a closer look at Dina's life and they became, became suspicious of Dina's account of Julian's death. Uh -huh. And after the verdict of her trial, they announced a reinvestigation into Julian's death, right. which had been eight years before. Mm -hmm. So police exhumed Julian's body. So good on Julian's mum for getting him buried. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, but forensic tests failed to reveal any new evidence. So the case was just um, circumstantial. But police, can, um, they focused on the conflicting accounts Dina had given on the night that Julian died. So Dina was charged with murder. Um, and in a written statement, she told police that she could not accurately recall what happened on the night that Julian died. At her trial, the prosecution argued that Dina had murdered Julian for money and a friend of hers had came forward and said that Dina had laced his favourite meal, a hot curry, with a lethal dose of prescription drugs. So mm, that's, we reckon that's how it died. sounds like it might have been. Yeah, so in December 2003, Dina was convicted of Julian's murder and was sentenced to life in prison. Good. So she completed her minimum term of imprisonment in uh, 2019 and is now eligible for parole. Ooh. So in April 2022, which was like... Last two, month? Well, uh, no, no it's June months, now. It's June now, yeah. Ah, two months ago. Two months ago. Uh, the parole board announced that they would consider her case for release and publish their decision in May. Now, I have to say to our listeners, yes, it's June that this has been published, but it's not, I think it'll... Well, it's the first of June today that we're recording. Mm -hmm. Um and this will be released next week, so it's only still going to be the start of June. Mm -hmm. But if I do find an update, I will update everybody at a later mm -hmm. date. But for now, I don't know because like it was only May was just yesterday. Yeah. So <laughs> and there's nothing been and I haven't yet. seen anything. No. Yeah. So if I do, I will let everybody know. Mm -hmm. Um. So Lee Wyatt later said that what he did was for love and in the hope that he would be reunited with his son. Um, and as I said throughout this whole research, I've never seen anything mentioned about the son. So you've no you idea know, what part. Someone, I mean, maybe he was living with. I mean, I don't even know about her family or anything like that. Mm. You know, like if she had a, like parents that. Because no, what we received when she was sworn off to Florida. Exactly. And, stuff, and when she was in prison for the. Yeah. 
the, the, the stealing the money and stuff. So he must have been somewhere. I'm, I'm thinking maybe like he was with his grandparents mm, or something maybe. like that. Hopefully he was somewhere. Well, it sounds like she was living a very free life of not having a child. Of not having a child, yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, didn't see much responsibility of, of her son there. So maybe he was living with other relatives and maybe yeah. that's why he's not been mentioned. Cause well, hopefully wherever he, he was, he was happy and still had a happy life no mm. matter what she was doing. Yeah. Um. So Lee, Lee was actually on the run for three years. Wow. And was sending her money, having no clue what she was doing. All oh, this marriages and deaths and Florida's and dying and all that. He had no idea. And at some point, he even ended up sleeping rough. Um, after Dina's conviction, police were still investigating her um, about the dis- disappearance of other, other another of, his bo- of her boyfriends. Right. Um, a guy called Stoyan Kostov who she dated in the 70s and 80s, has been missing since they dated. So since the oh, wow. um, early 80s, I think. Um, she met him in Bulgaria, because he was Bulgarian. She she was a regular visitor to Bulgaria mm-hmm. um, in the late 70s and um, early 80s. Um, and as I said, they dated for a while, and he's never been found. He's never been seen since they dated. Mm. God, yeah. So... She could have had something to do with that. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it could be a coincidence, yeah. but um, we, we don't know what's happened to him. God, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I kind of feel sorry for Lee and all this, really. I mean, obviously, I feel sorry for the other people as well, but... I know. He, but, like, know. he having to go on the run mm-hmm. for no reason except that your wife wanted you out of the way so that she could go and mm-hmm. get money from... Because this has all been about money. Yeah, yeah. Every yeah. single bit of this has been about money. Absolutely, yeah. It's crazy. So she wanted her husband out of the way. But then you do wonder, like, why did she not try and maybe murder him? Because like, he didn't have any money. Well, well, well I guess that's the reason. But I mean, <laughs> obviously they don't have license. Because remember, their um, their business went down the pan, yeah, and true. then he was working. He was working in a hotel. Mm. Um, no disrespect to anybody working in a hotel, but you know it's not going to be like loads of money. Is yeah, it? yeah. It's not going to be like mega mega bucks working yeah. in a hotel. So mm. he didn't have any money, and maybe they, they didn't have life insurance yeah, or anything not. like that. So true. She's just. She was just like. Get rid of that one, mm-hmm. and I'll find somebody else to. Yeah. Or maybe at some point she was planning on getting back together with him. Maybe. Once she had got all this money, I mean, I don't know. Well, yeah, because then she was obviously going to be saying, "Well, that's it. We've been paid out on Sean the Leprechaun." Exactly. <laughs> that could. I never thought of that. That could have been her end goal. Mm-hmm. Like once she'd managed to fleece all these men out of money, mm-hmm. then she and then she could go back to Lee and say, "That's it. I've done it. We, I've, I've, we've got the deal." Yeah. Maybe. But then Sean the Leprechaun wouldn't have been appearing on. TV or anything yeah. like that, so we do realise at some point. Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, so thank you everybody for listening. That was a bit of a, a bizarre one. It was a bizarre um, one. So I hope you all managed to keep up. <laughs> yes. Because there was a few times where Laura looked a bit confused and as I said, the eyebrows were getting, were <laughs> getting raised. Uh-huh. Um, but, excuse me, if you want to follow us um, or get in contact with us, um, you can find our details in the show notes. If you want to head on over to Patreon and get some Bonus content with prices starting from as little as a pound a month. Uh, it's patreon.com slash crime divers. The link will be in the show notes. And if you haven't already, as always, please don't forget to subscribe, rate and review. Thanks for listening. Bye.